Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for coming today. For me, it's an honor to be here and share with you my knowledge and experience. Let me introduce myself. My name is Wendy Gonzalez. I am an education research and consultant and teacher as well. My background is computer science engineer, and I also work as a teacher in different countries, Venezuela, and Spain, and England now. I am currently doing my PhD, PhD research about education and technology. How the teacher use the new technology in the classroom. The use that, for example, here in Estonia, the teacher use the technology is different than in Venezuela. Because in South America, the countries are focused in reduce the digital divide. And Europe countries are focused in effective use of the technology in the classroom. Uh, I can't see anything. Okay. Let's see. A moment, move to the next. And of course, uh, the use of this technology depends on the reality of each country, because each country are in different ICT, ICT implementation. Here you can see, uh, I create this graphic. This is in the law, you can see at the left side, a group of, group of country, they are working to improve the access. And the right, on the red side, you can see a group of the country where we working in effective use of this technology. Let me start. There are different key for one to achieve the effective use of this technology. L one is access, another is usage. For access, access involves connectivity, infrastructure, and technical support. For effective usage, involves infrastructure, infra sorry. ICT support, teacher training, introduce the new technology in the national curriculum and create digital learning resort. Let me start with the first couple of countries, Venezuela and Bolivia. It's one, there are one example of countries in South America that they are working to supply the school with connectivity and infrastructure. This is one example for Venezuela, it's called Proyecto Canaima. This is, they have one computer for child, for primary and secondary school. And the computer doesn't have internet, and the computer is based in teaching through projects. And this is the use of this computer in Venezuela. For a school and teacher, what they are doing with this? The first, the teacher can using this to teaching for projects, but for students, is access to the technology and learning through the progress. Uh, in South America, it's an inequality society. And this kind of program can have the opportunity to the student to give to access to the technology. And the negative point of this uh, program is they don't have good uh, teacher training and in my field work a lot of teachers complain about this because the student have the computer but the teacher doesn't know how to use this computer in the classroom every day. The next couple of countries is Uruguay, Argentina and Colombia. They are running different projects as well to supply the school with connectivity and infrastructure. And they start with programs for teacher, ICT teacher, ICT computer, and teacher training. Uh, and is, uh, sorry, they start with delivery digital resource. In Uruguay, they is, this is okay, Uruguay. They start with SEIBAL, this is a program in Uruguay. It is one computer per child for a primary and secondary school. And this is for Argentina, it's Conectar Igualdad. It's one computer for secondary 
student and for teachers. And this is the Colombia Digital, is from Colombia, and it's one co supply computers for school, primary and secondary school. So far, Seibal have deliver, delivered mm, two mi one million of computers, and Conectar Igualdad for Argentina, uh, five, more than five million computers, and Col Colombia Digital, um, two million computers. But what happened with this? The teachers are using this technology in the classroom. This is the problem, because they are now they start uh, give teacher training, but the teacher doesn't know how to use this technology in the classroom. It's a problem in South America. Other problems is about connectivity. We don't have good connectivity, and these projects are focused in support the, the, the give computer to teachers and students, no to all the school. This is a, a problem for them. And next country is uh, Chile. Chile is the leader in South America. They just start maybe 20 years ago implementing ICT policies in the school. And now they are working with the, this project is called Imagina Chile. This is supply the school with computer and connectivity. And they are focused in the teacher training. This teacher training has to be a focus in methodology, pedagogy, methodology, and use the ICT in all the areas of education. Chile has different, different models. One of, this, of them is they use the mobile computer lamp, the traditional ICT classroom, and they start last year with one-to-one -one model, but only for um, year seven is like uh, first year the secondary school here. And what is the use of this computer in the classroom? The teacher start to planning the lessons and in the, uh, implementing these, if the ICT in the curriculum, and Chile start to monitor the student. Why? Because they start with this policy and they do need to know what happened with this. What is, the, what is the, the use of this technology in the classroom? And they create one test for the student. And to measure the ICT skills in the students. For a student, uh, they start to learn different subjects through this technology. One example is English. They create a school network with other schools in other countries and use native English teacher to teach uh, students in South America. They start to presentation information like Word, PowerPoint, individual learning, because uh, they, the student can take the computers at home and they use this at home as well. And for communication and develop ICT skills. South America is the, now is the region that they are working a lot to implement the ICT in the classroom. But they have some problems. One of them is the connectivity is the big challenge of the region. Second one, they need to focus the teacher in teacher training. And the other is that they don't have good evaluation systems. They create the ICT policies, but then they don't know what happened with this. They don't track in these ICT, these ICT policies. But they are working, as I told you, as I mentioned you before, hard to implement this technology in the classroom. And they have working together for regional projects. One of them is RELPE, this is a website. Al, at least 20 countries are working together to support this project. They create digital learning resource and they, the teachers start to communicate and collaborate.
And this is one space where the teacher can share information, uh, learning resource, and experience. A lot of teachers in South America are using this website called RELPE. My first work showed that in South America there is a low utilization of this technology because they, the teachers don't, don't, as I mentioned, you don't, they don't have the knowledge to, this, to use this technology. And for example, in Venezuela, they use the canaimas maybe two times per week. And in Uruguay, they use these computers maybe four hours per week. It's not enough. They don't take advantage of this technology. This is what happened in South America now. They are doing a good job, but they need to improve that. Now we start with the European countries. Europe have, the school in Europe has better connection and infrastructure than South America. And in Spain, they, in maybe 10 years ago, they implement ICT in the curriculum. And ICT is a subject in the curriculum. And they start, in 2012, they start with um, one new ICT plan and focusing, improve the digital competence for, for teachers and uh, co improve the connectivity in the schools and create open resource. And now what is the use of this technology in, in the school? It is saying that in South America countries, but they start to use software or apps to evaluate and feedback the student and the governments in Spain, they give this public school, one school management software. Each, uh, each school in Spain have this software to control everything like students, data, and this is a public software. About, as to what is the, the what is the use of this technology in the classroom? They start with create or develop basic coding and skills because ICT is a subject in the, in the curriculum. And in this, in Europe, it start with the e-learning. E-learning is more common in Europe than in South America because in Europe they have better connectivity than in South America. Uh, next. Next country is Finland. I haven't finished my research in Finland, in Finland yet. Maybe you know more than, more than country than me. But I can give you one little resume about this. Um, Finland in 2010 started to create different projects to promote the ICT in the, in the school. One of them is learning solution. They join different entities, take companies, teachers, and experts to create new learning environment. This is the new plan in Finland. And uh, they encourage the teacher to use innovation pedagogy in the classroom. And for a student, create new learning environment like gaming, use the gaming to learn. But this is the new plan. They start in 2000, and in this year, they start with this plan because the new curriculum started in 2016. Um, the next country is England. England. England have, in 2012, all the schools in England start to teach computer science, primary and secondary school. Uh, this is a, it's a big project in England because in the primary school, the same teacher have to teach computer science and they don't have the knowledge to teach computer science. And some, the same teacher that every day have to take computer science was difficult for them and the students have to learn about the thinking problem, algorithm, and this kind of thing, the computer science. But now they start to 
you, the expert go to the school and teach the, the, the student these computer science. This is for primary school only. For secondary school, uh, every secondary school in England has to offer computer science. In England, uh, every school has the um, autonomy to buy any software and app to support the teaching, learning, and school management. They have a lot of application to, pro to control the behavior, progress, um, homework, and and this, what is the use of this technology in the classroom? Is communication. The, all the communication in Ling England in the schools is through any applications, email, email. If for a student, what is the, the use of this technology? They start with comp a development of computer science skills and collaborative learning. This is the one overview of what is happening. Uh, South America and in Europe. ICT and the curriculum. Um, all the countries are using different models to implement ICT in the curriculum. One is as a subject. A lot of teachers use this it's a, as a tool, it's pro programming or coding. Other is as a tool to support the learning, to, to teach other subjects. And other, other is an integral part of the learning process. Different countries mix these models. But the main one is as a tool. The teacher use this technology for planning lessons, for delivery lessons, and for support the teaching. This is the main use of the technology in the classroom. The idea for the future is start with this, use the technology as integrate part of the learning process, but it depends on the teacher. It depends on the country, uh, this is a difficult topic. Um, my field work uh, showed me that the teacher used the technology as a tool, as I mentioned you before, because it depends on the country. In Spain, the ICT training is no good. Uh, this is one problem in Spain. This is why the women are, are now focusing on improve this, the teacher training. But the problem in Spain is every, in the last 20 years, we changed seven times the education law. And they start with this plan in 2012. And I don't know what will happen with this because last week, the new government decided to paralyze this and we will see what is the result. In England, the problem is because the teacher doesn't have time to innovate learning with technology. In England, education system in England is based on results. And the teachers have a lot of job to do, like planning the lesson, delivery lessons, uh, paperwork, and they told me we can't use the new technology in the, le in the learning process. It's difficult as a tool, yes, but to innovate uh, and to improve the learning process is difficult. In Finland, it's a special case because they have good results, they have excellent results by using the technology as a tool. And the teacher asks, why do I have to use this technology if you have good results? This is, yeah, this is true, why? Because they need to know that we need to prepare the students for the new world, for the future, with the ICT competence to face the new, the everyday life, this is, and the technology is a key world, key, key player in this, in this context. In South America, different, I told you, the world are running different projects 
to supply the school with connectivity, with infrastructure. But, but the teachers are using this technology in the classroom. This is the question. Because now my in Venezuela, the teachers say, all my students in primary school have one computer. How I can use this? These are improving, are improving my student performance. This is why it's, they need, the government need to create this plan, but support the teacher with good training. It's not only give computer to the teacher and to the student. They need to improve, they need to work together to put uh, to, it's a, it's a, if I want to improve the result of my students, I need to work together. In Uruguay, they, they this plan Cebal start 10 years ago. And at the beginning, they only give computers to the students and then they started to give, give computers to the teachers because they don't know that the teacher need to have access to the technology as well. And now they are running one interesting program is they, they want to improve the student, the English student performance and they are working together to improve this, but we will see what will happen. In South America now, all the countries are working together to improve the connectivity and infrastructure. This is the, this is the main points in South America. In Europe, um, is effective usage, but it depends on the teacher as well, because some teachers have to use, find a way to receive le uh, training and try to find a way to use the, this technology to increment, to, to support and increment my student performance. Other example I can give you for about learning or a good example. In Spain, they are working a lot with, uh, it's one, one part of Spain they are working with flipper classroom. And this is, the, this is a controversial problem because some teachers I agree with them and others no. And this is, uh, they are working to improve these kind of methodology. No. For me, as a, I would like to say to finish only that um, the technology but itself can shape the learning process or can improve our student performance. It's the pain of the usage that a student and teacher for this technology because the, the technology is a, a good tool to improve our student performance but the pain of the teacher. I, I believe that the teacher is the key player in this, in this um, implementation of the technology in the classroom. Uh, so I encourage you to use the technology available to work together with your school to improve your student performance. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Uh, why did you choose these countries uh, to your doctoral studies, uh, to research? Because um, when I start with my PhD research, I need to decide countries for South America and countries for Europe. And I try to find different contexts. For example, Venezuela is, 
they are starting with the implementation of this technology in the classroom. They are in the early stage. And Chile, they is the leader in South America about education. And Uruguay is in the middle. This is why I try to choose different country. In Europe, Spain, they need to improve something, but they are working very well. And England is, they, are, they use a lot of the new technology in the school, as a school of management, uh, as a, to improve the student performance, this is why I choose England. And Finland, because this is the leader in education in the world. This is why I decide to choose this. Um, yes, um, oh, um, yes, I understand that you, you choose, you chose uh, a couple of regions, like uh, Europe and South America, yeah. both of them are like uh, occidental regions, let's say. Um, most of these countries, they speak uh, languages that are with a few hundreds of millions of, of speakers, that me which means that the technology is quite... Uh, prepare for them, there is a lot of content in their local language, um, but pr probably in other regions of the world there is, there are extra barriers. I would say that, uh, I would say that there are countries that are far behind um, and Venezuela, like if we go to Africa or we go to, to Asia, do you think that there are extra barriers uh, or, I don't know, cultural problems or any extra problems that you don't, you, you cannot find in, in the country you, ch you chose? As I mentioned before, the, it depends on the context of each country. Venezuela now, they start with this project, Canaima, in 2009. But now it's a stunt because uh, go Venezuela is going bad by situation, political, social, economic. And the teachers we don't know what happened with this. This is the usage of ICT in the classroom depend of different contexts. And all, and how much support they receive for all the stakeholders, like government, society, uh, students, schools, family. South America is, a, as I mentioned before, is a inequality country. And the, ga the social gap is big. The difference between the low class and high class is huge. And this kind of initiative can have the opportunity to the student have one computer that they didn't have before. But now they need to work to improve the effective uses of this technology in the classroom. Any question? More? I have time because I finished too early. <laughs> I think yeah, I have time. I have one question. Yeah. I finished maybe five minutes before. Uh, there is a saying that you want to change the school, then start from changing the assessment. But I understood that uh, you, in your model, uh, the, the results uh, are kind of important variable. So you said that in Finland they have good results and yeah. that's why they don't need technology. But uh, isn't it true that if, if uh, you bring in technology in a really w large scale and systemic way to the school, it changes teaching and learning so that actually you, you, you are going to get different results and you cannot measure the results anymore in the same way. Uh, as long as I know uh, th th this is what happened in, in Peru uh, where they also applied this uh, uh, one laptop per child yes, uh, yeah, well. system, and uh, but they, they 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 brought in technology, but they kept uh, in measuring uh, everything in the same way. Actually, they they brought in the auditors from World Bank to to measure it, and uh, everyone thought that the project failed because the results of the mathematics standardized test didn't go up. Uh, so, do you treat in your studies? the results or assessment of the results uh, also is something which is actually moving target or you you think that the assessment of results should stay the same it doesn't <laughs> matter if you learn with, uh, with technology or without it <laughs> it's a difficult question look uh, international research and OECD and UNESCO 
they say the technology maybe no improve the student performance, it, but this is general because there are a specific case on the, where the technology improved this. Uh, what happened in South America? You told about Peru. Yes, they are implementing different, the one-to-one -one model. In South America, a lot of countries are implementing this. One computer per child, because the government believes this is one way to reduce the digital divide. And this is true, because South America needs this. But now, it doesn't improve the student performance. Performance is measured by pencil yeah. paper and pencil but test, they, then but, it doesn't. But they are working change. now. They are. They know this now. They are working to imp to create new activity policies to support the teacher training, to introduce the in the national curriculum ICT. They are working now, but we will see the results. I went to South America in 2040 for six months. Six months. I traveled to different countries. I visit schools, make interview to teacher, health teachers, and the entity responsible for implementing this new technology in the classroom. But it's, it's the, as I mentioned before, it's the reality is different in South America than Europe. In Europe, of course, the teachers are using the new technology and can improve the results. But it's a pain of the teacher because now in, the, in Europe, in Estonia, who have good connectivity, all the schools have good connectivity and have computers. But now, as a teacher, what I can do with this, how I can improve my student performance, is the pain of the teacher and, of course, the school leader as well. Because when I went to Colombia, I met a one head teacher who was an amazing person, and they encouraged all the teachers to use the technology. And this school have good performance, but this is one specific case. It's the pain of, of the reality of the country. And as I mentioned you before, as a teacher, you have to work with your school and try to use the technology available and take advantage of this. Because Europe have the good connectivity, have good infrastructure, take advantage of this and use the new technology in the classroom. Any question? I have time. <laughs> One more. Thank you.